So today's video has actually been about a week in the making because I've been trying to do a lot of research and a lot of just soul searching and a lot of self soothing to get myself to a place to where I can speak about it in a measured and metered kind of way instead of being more reactionary like I was going to be starting out with this video. So about a week, two weeks ago, something like that, we had the presidential debate. Um, and during that debate, there were comments made about a city in, in Ohio called Springfield and about Haitian immigrants, quote unquote, illegal Haitian immigrants that were eating people's pets. Now, this comment was made by one Donald Trump during one of his many, many factually dubious statement, right? statement rambles that he went on during the debate that um, was picked up by many of his followers and many people that live in the Springfield area and were basically run with. They took the statement of a man who has been known to be less than honest as gospel and ran with it to do um, various reactionary actions. So um, I, I waited a week to make this video because I honestly wanted to make sure that I had both all the information that I could find as well as plenty of time to cool my jets because my first um, my first video that I made last week was more of a um, tirade against people just basically for everything and sundry and that wasn't going to help anyone. So with this new video, I want to do a bit of a deep dive into how this has affected the Springfield community, as well as how we got to this place to begin with. So join me as we do a bit of an introspection into how we've gotten here. We have this strong delusion that comes about because of God's allowance of the enemy's work. So where is the logical conclusion going with this? Well, it comes down to what people believe Christianity is in today's world. Um, I have a quote from a writer that wrote a book and was writing about pastors who had had issues with their congregants because um, they were speaking the words of Jesus and they didn't recognize the words of Jesus, but rather they thought they were liberal talking points. So in conservative Christians are now rejecting the teachings of Jesus um, because the doctrine of, get this, the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount is now weak in the eyes of the, of the, of the conservative Christian. The conservative Christian no longer believes in the pillars that form our faith. The pillars that form what Jesus taught us, which there are four. Love your neighbor, feed the poor, heal the sick, and welcome the stranger. If you preach on that, if you preach on the Sermon on the Mount from a pulpit in some of today's American churches, you will be laughed out. Because according to the quote, that's old teaching, that's weak. I 
the fact that people who profess to be Christian are dismissing the teachings of Jesus as weak and old and that it no longer works, it begs the question, why are we doing this now? And so this great delusion that I talked about is being used by the enemy to not only divide us in different ways, even socially, but it's also dividing us and divorcing us from the original teachings of Jesus. Um, Christian writer <laughs> and um, very educated man, Russell Moore, wrote a book where he shares a something that he's spoken with several pastors about that concerns him and should concern all of us. And he says, Christianity is in crisis. And this thinking is a result of having multiple pastors tell me, quote, essentially the same story about quoting the Sermon on the Mount parenth parenthetically in their preaching. Turn the other cheek and then have someone come up t after to say, where did you get these liberal talking points? And what was alarming to me is that in most of these scenarios, when the pastor would say, I'm literally quoting Jesus Christ, the response would not be, I apologize. The response would be, yes, but that doesn't work anymore. That's weak. I highlighted this because it's very important. When we get to the point where the teaching of Je teachings of Jesus himself are seen as subversive to us, we are in a crisis. The strong delusion that I speak of is not that... <laughs> The Antichrist has come, but no one sees him. It is that we ourselves are deluded into thinking that the teachings of Jesus no longer apply. That love thy neighbor is no longer important. That the four pillars of an outward expression of the two greatest commands, love your God and love each other, which the four pillars are love your neighbor, feed the poor, heal the sick, and welcome the stranger. They are no longer welcome in the modern American church because, as they said, they're liberal in the eyes of these folks. The delusion isn't that there is some big bad out there running the thing running everything behind the scenes. No, that's a distraction. The delusion is that everything said in life has to have a political edge. That everything in life either is liberal or conservative. That everything in life has to revolve around my political identity. That is where we are at now. It's this self-assigned identi identity through a political allegiance, which the Bible warns against swearing oaths. What is swearing an oath? Well, back in the old days, swearing an oath was declaring your allegiance to a king or a monarch or a leader of some kind. When you swore an oath, it wasn't, you know, these days when someone um, reads in a, in a book from like the 90s and early 2000s, he, he or she swore an oath. We think, oh, he's using a swear word. No. Back in those days, swearing an oath was actually pledging allegiance to something or someone. What do we have people doing? With our children in schools, we we pledge allegiance to the flag, or at least we used to. Back when I was in school, in grade school and elementary, that's what we did. 
now we have people that are pledging allegiance to a man and to his and, and to the political party that backs him rather than pledging allegiance and swearing an oath to Jesus and his kingdom. The delusion is not that we are enemies. The delusion is that we are citizens of this world. We are not if we are in Christ. If we are in Christ, God, him, Jesus himself says, you are citizens of my kingdom, my ambassadors in this world. An ambassador is not a citizen of the country he goes to. An ambassador is a citizen of the country he comes from. When we are born again into newness of life, we no longer are who we used to be. We no longer have the same nature we used to have. That heart of stone that we were born with is taken out and given a heart of flesh. The old nature which desired sin has been killed and the new nature in Christ is that which desires and thirsts after righteousness. So the delusion is that we are still the same people we were before. The delusion is that we can still be the same people we were before and be Christians. Because make no mistake, the way to life is narrow, says the word of God, and many will not find that way. Many will not walk that path, either because sin is still rampant in their life and they choose not to, or because they fall back into sin because they are not watching closely to stay on the path. Because the Bible warns about falling off the path. Do not stray to the right or to the left, or you will fall off the path. That's what the word says. So those people that say, oh, I prayed a prayer 20 years ago. Great. Pray another one now. Pray another one now. Pray one for your, for your current situation and for your current soul. For your current for the current condition of your soul that you would be made right with him still or again. Because you cannot you cannot pay for stuff today with a check that was that was written yesterday. I do not mean to be so harsh sometimes. But it's getting to the point where I worry for the state of our nation, but also for the state of our church. We have so many people, even in my local congregations, that I am part of and that I that I interact with, that are so politically divided right down the middle. Yes, we should be involved in politics because in order to live the Great Commission, we should preach to all people. And when we see injustice, we should speak up against it. Yes. When we see crimes against humanity being committed, whether it's illegal on, in the eyes of the law or not, we should speak up. Yes. But to say, oh, well, unless you vote this way, you're not a Christian is wrong. To say, unless you agree with me, you are not on my side, is wrong. The only area where we have to agree is that Jesus is Lord, and his way is the only way that matters, and everything else is a moot point until we get that taken care of. Until we are serving Jesus the way that he wants us and desires us to serve him, everything else is a moot point that means squat in my honest understanding of what the word says. The word does not say, oh, well, if they're not part of your political party, they're not part of your, your body of believers. Wrong. There were many, even in the early church, that disagreed and yet still were the body of Christ. Paul himself challenged the other apostles because of things that were happening and things that were being said. He challenged them. 
it was a disagreement in 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 policy and in in practice, but it was not a disagreement on the essential faith. And so that is something we need to continue to wrestle with, is that I might be on one side and you might be on the other as far as politics, but we are still on the same side when it comes to serving Jesus. And so that, I think, is how we got here. It's not just because of one man spouting falsehoods and half-truths, although that is part of it because that's been happening for as long as mankind has been around. But it is because we ourselves have bought into the lie and to the deception that party and politics matter more than calling and faith in Christ. That is my entire spiel on this. You can take it. You can leave it. You can write a hate comment. You can write a love comment. You can ask for prayer. And you can ask for patience. And I will happily welcome all of it. You can like and you can dislike. But just please do not go away from here without challenging yourself to think differently than what you did before you watched this video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. I'll see you guys in the next one.